so this is the malar eminence so make sure that this is at the highest highest level so a little lateral retraction and to the opposite side so that this frontal lobe falls back this temporal lobe falls back right so this i have marked the zygomatic arch right this is the midline so for the tyrional craniotomy just uh, around uh, within 1 cm of the anti, uh, the stragus just at just above or at the level of uh, uh, zygomatic arc behind the hair line for a tyrional craniotomy you just have to go like this and just stop it at uh, midline but for this orbitozygomatic osteotomy as where you want to the orbitozygomatic craniotomy and uh, skull base approaches through the middle fossa so just start at just anterior 1 cm anterior within the 1 cm anterior to the tragus go a little to the lower aspect of the uh, zygomatic arch a little down then go up and a little just at the level of the upper part of the pinna turn around and just at this this is the mid pupillary line just stop it there at the hairline angle so this will give you the adequate expo exposure for the orbitozygomatic uh, craniotomy so just don't go full thickness from the scalp at this level be very gentle if possible take help of your scissor medicine bomb scissor dissect so that you should not be injuring the superficial Steve. temporal artery so this is the superficial temporal artery so try to dissect in this region with the help of your scissor and all that and you will find it pulsating very well so see now this is the angle of the mandible here is the mastoid so the facial nerve is emerging from here in this groove and it divides into five branches so the frontal branch usually takes this course something like that okay this is the anterior part this is a zygomatic arch i can palpate it it should be somewhat here so don't go there in this fashion so you just have to make an incision into the temporal fascia like this and take it forward okay now i have come to the bone here i am taking the whole fascia along i have lifted the superficial temporal artery here i am going under it now i have reached the root of zygomatic arch here so take everything along so this is the orbital margin okay so now you have to elevate it from the this is the superior orbital margin here separate it from the periorbita so i have now this is the suture this is a zygomatic process of the frontal bone and this is a frontal process of the zygomatic this is the suture just expose it <coughs> so 
so this is a zygomatic process this temporal fascia is actually attached to the superior margin of the zygomatic arch just at the superior margin and the under surface here you have to divide it sharply don't worry you, your facial nerve has already been taken care of it is into the flap now just dividing the facial attachment just from the inferior margin of the zygomatic arch so you just have to expose this whole of the malar eminence so this is a zygomatic arch okay this is the root here and this is a uh, malar eminence okay this is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone this is the zygomatic process of the frontal bone this is the suture this fascia we have taken along with our scalp flap to preserve the facial nerve okay and uh, now we are having this uh, lateral margin of the orbit this is a superior uh, margin of the orbit this is the periorbita okay it is now clearly separated if there is any tear in the periorbita so there is the protrusion of the fat which comes out which usually troubles you in the uh, making of all the osteotomies and everything so for that you need to be little careful now we will be i'll be taking usually for the tyrion craniotomy so this is the flap for that you don't have to expose for that much posteriorly but now we because we have to do the extra dural work in for the subtemporal region and the all the cavernous sinus that's why i have exposed more so i'll be taking off this thing from the posterior thing so this is the line of incision for the wider exposure it's not required classically for the tyrional and because i am planning the free flap craniotomy i leave a cuff of muscle here so that it is sutured back once we are planning to close the craniotomy another piece of advice here once you are elevating the temporalis muscle from the bone make sure you are not coagulating the because there you will find lot of bleeders here if there is a significant bleeder just point coagulate do not go do any blanket coagulation from the under surface of temporary muscle because all the nerve supply grow from inside out so you will be damaging all the nerve supply from the to the temporary muscle and it will get uh, atrophied later in the course of time and this is a non functional muscle okay so the temporary muscle is completely taken care of from the underlying bone so we have elevated it completely so now you can see it separate it out from the under surface of the zygomatic arch and the malar eminence also so it is completely separated now just hold it there so we will make our a bur hole here so this is our midline i have already marked so mark it from the inside also with the help of your unipolar mark the midline always from inside so that you are sure that you are not reaching up to the midline or going across it okay drill periosteum elevator so this is the flap what we have taken off 
So this is a Swinard ridge. So a ridge that you can fill it away with a large bone ronger. This part of the bone, this you have to nibble up. Make it flush with the temporal fossa floor. Now you drill up. Drill up this whole anterior ridge. If you follow this ridge down, you will reach the anterior cleanup process. So this is the superior uh, margin of the orbit. This is the roof. This is the ceiling fissure. This is the sphenoid ridge which I drilled up to the base of the clinoid. Okay. This is the lateral wall of the orbit. This is the this is the malar eminence. Okay. So now I just want to show you something. If you strip the dura off from this angle, so go down. So this. Can you see it? This dural fold. So this dural fold will guide you into the superior orbital fissure. So this is superior orbital fissure. If I go from inside, I will reach there only. Superior orbital fissure. And this is actually the foramen of rotundum. Okay, on the just lateral aspect of this uh, superior orbital fissure. So now, if you slip your any dissector or some probe there, I am. Slipping down into an another group here. This is inferior orbital fissure. So, so I have made the number one craniotomy here with the help of your craniotom. You just make number two cut, and you will reach till the lateral margin. Okay. So I'll make a osteotomy here. Okay, so now our cut number three is over. Now we have to make the cut number four. This will be our cut number four. Okay, so cut number four is complete. Now we are left with cut number five from inferior orbital okay. fissure. So I have to join. The this area till here. So initial part is cut number five, and this is cut number six. So make sure that this is the foramen of rotundum here. So you have to be medial to that. Okay. From here you start. Don't. Go to that. Okay. Okay. So this So now this bone is mobile now. Hold with the bone ronger, and you will be able to deliver it in one so, piece. So this is the whole piece which we have taken up, along with the a part of superior wall and the lateral wall of the orbit, right? So this is the status, and once you have to put it back you just have to make sure that you are putting one plate here two plates there here i would prefer a nylon suture not a plate okay now we retract back this whole temporalis muscle or a further down little bit more bony work is required here i'll just nibble off this bone leave it Okay, drill. So you drill up these undulations here. So this was a superior orbital fissure, orbit. This is foramen of rotundum. This is foramen oval. This is a V3. Okay. And this is foramen of spinosum with the middle meningeal artery coming through the through it.
this is gspn okay so here you have coagulate and cut the middle vein artery micro scissor cut toward the dura not toward the foramen okay now to reflect it this is the floor of middle fossa that is a petrous bone which actually you have to drill for the cavate so the middle the internal carotid artery is likely to be just under this gspn okay now how to retract it further so just reflect the this is the dural layer from the nerves this is the fifth v3 so the outer layer of the dura we have cut which is actually going along the nerve through the foramen and this is the nerve propria so reflect it completely See? again we are cutting the outer layer So this is the dura which is reflecting from the superior orbital fissure also. Okay. So this is the V2, this is the V3, and this is the V1. From here till here is the V1. This is V2. This is V3. This whole area is the gasserian ganglion. so you have to reflect it completely this way so this this is your gsp this whole thing is the cortical bone this is the medial margin okay medial margin of the petrous just free it free up the whole of the gasserian ganglion okay that is the fourth nerve along the tentorium that main thing is just you have to peel off and remain into the plane I, neither you are going into the cavernous sinus proper proper or into the intradural compartment this is your anterior clinoid process okay six now so this is the arcuate eminence okay so this is the gspn so now actually there is no triangle actually this is a quadrilateral quadrangle here so this bone will go so you have to be very sure that uh, uh, you are not going to injure uh, internal carotid artery how will you make it sure you have to identify the gspn here and this bone you can drill very fast and quickly but as you go towards uh, laterally towards the gspn be slow take the diamond drill and then you have to drill it up okay so make sure that uh, this is uh, ic is not injured here so another thing is that you have to be very sure that many times this uh, superior wall or the roof of the carotid canal is deficient and the carotid artery is directly visible just underneath it so so that is the thing you you have to be sure that it is not that situation okay so this is the groove for the gasserian ganglion okay so you can drill this bone till here okay actually this this part is uh, in fact is the tentorium which is actually getting reflected now this should be the fourth nerve underneath it drill please now you can see this is the petrous dura on the posterior fossa now it is showing up now So once you open up, now you enter into the posterior fossa. This is cerebellum actually. Okay. Here actually you land up injuring the fourth nerve, which you have to be little careful. So this is the posterior fossa dura. This is cerebellum. Okay. 
and this is tentorium. So invariably once you are going to divide the tentorium you will get a, a superior petrosal sinus somewhat here. This is the medial margin of the tentorium. So you can cut it, you will always encounter superior petrosal sinus somewhat here. You need to tackle it by coagulating from the both sides. Here you have to be, you have to search for fourth nerve. This is the fourth nerve. So this is the area of uh, basically ambient system. Here, there's the medial margin of the instrument. You won't be able to identify the structures. That's all. So this gives you a very wide exposure. If you have any problem, you can drill a little bit bone posteriorly and interiorly also, depending upon your exposure. So. Most of the tumors in the petrochlival region, fifth nerve schwannomas, and many bony tumors, especially chondrosarcoma, or many uh, or little, uh, sometimes the laterally placed chordomas. So this is an excellent, excellent ap approach. Now you can so see here. So this is the gastrin ganglion. This is the V3, V2, V1. This this is the sixth nerve. This is the fourth nerve. Okay, third nerve will be a little lost.